Hello, welcome back to the David Watson podcast. It has been a while. I've been very busy. I've actually been doing another podcast, hence the reason I haven't done any episodes lately. But I am back. I am back. And in today's episode, I am talking with Anthony from Los Angeles. Unfortunately, towards the end of the podcast, the sound went. So you will. it will come to an abrupt end because... Um, Sadly, yeah, the sound just went my end. It was very crackly. I'll leave a little bit in so you can hear what was happening. But he is coming back on. I will be talking to him probably in October. And as always, please like and subscribe. Let me know what you think. And if there's anybody you know that you would like to have on the podcast and you can put me in touch with them, send me a message. Drop me a line. Let me know. As always, thank you for listening. Hey, how are you doing? Welcome to the David Watson podcast, and thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Most definitely, man. Thank you for having me. Uh, just to give some people reference, you won't know this, but I actually found you because I came across a reel on Instagram probably about a year ago, and you were doing one of your burpee workouts, and there was just some like wicked back tune to it, and I just started following you from there, and then you know, and and it just kind of carried on. So, where did that all start? Well, usually, most people find me from those burpee videos, um, and to other people who see these videos, they think like you know, it's such a cool workout, but there's so much meaning, so much you know, story so much story behind that actual exercise for me. And honestly, I've been doing it for a long time. That's why I look a lot different than other people. I look more smooth when I'm doing it because I've done it a billion times. I've done it way more longer than anyone else has. Um, and I'm just fluent with it strictly because I used it as my therapy. Yeah. Honestly, because it is the only thing exercise is the only thing that will help you get out of your mind. And that's going to help any type of trauma, mindset issues, fears, doubts, anything. And so that is my go-to exercise. That's been my exercise for the longest time. Um, honestly, that's my go-to if I want to escape and if I want to find answers within myself. So um, I've been doing that since a teenager. Uh, I grew up in the neighborhood. And growing up in the neighborhood, you have older cats who are going in and out of jail. They come out. They show you the workouts that they do because they're still on program time mentally. And, dude, ever since I was younger, I'd, I'd just be mimicking them. And then until I got into my own trouble and how to face it and replicate it, basically. So that's been my life. That's been my story. Um, I've been through it all, and I've utilized this workout to basically – stop me and prevent me from thinking and acting out doing stupid stuff it's interesting you said something there about the how fluid you are when you do them and and as you said that there's this image of i can see in my head and it is almost like a dance step you know because yeah. um, I, I, I do them but i genuinely look like somebody who's in pain <laughs> yeah i mean i get this type of question a lot on how i can perform them better or what's going to help me get better at doing burpees or what other exercises can i implement so it would benefit that exercise and honestly it's just like anything in life you're just going to have to practice and go at a steady pace don't try to like you know, jump ahead and do what I'm doing. Like, don't do any of that. Just do the simple, basic movements as as quick as you can, but with proper form. And over time, you're going to get better. And through repetition, if you're approaching it as it's something that's needed in your life, something physical or mental, um, you're going to get better the more you do it. And that, just like I said, anything in life, it, it, it's the same thing. Um I've just done it so many times and I actually utilized it at the darkest times of my life to where I did it so much that I didn't even realize I was doing it. I was just out of my head. I was out of my body. I, I call it flow state and yeah. I just felt free. And then I kind of snapped back to reality and noticed this puddle 
of sweat that I've created because I just kept going. I just kept going. I just kept going. Yeah. So how long typically, what are the lengths of those workouts? Um, for the ones that you see on my Instagram, um, they're about 45 minutes. Um, it really depends what my workout is for that day, or it also depends what's going on in my life. Maybe I, maybe I made that video of me doing the burpees necessarily because something was going on and I just wanted to record myself to, you know, record that content real quick. But I might have set a timer for 30 yeah. minutes or an hour or maybe I ran right before or did a workout before. But they're usually pretty long. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I, yeah. I set the standards high for myself. Um, I make sure I max out. I make sure that I'm feeling weak and exhausted and throwing up maybe. Um, yeah. Just because... This has always been a mindset thing for me. And I've always said, if you tire the body, you will tire the mind. Oh, d d definitely. There is something that I, I often try and explain to people. Um, and, and I don't care if all you do is go for a walk for an hour a day, as long as it's a brisk walk. There, there is something mm -hmm. about that. As the body starts, as the body gets used to that habit and that routine, it's like a switch starts. It's like, oh, right, we're doing this now. And at that moment, exactly, everything else falls into place. But you have to create that habit. It has to. It has to. I mean, you're basically telling your body, like, hey, we got a lot going on up here, but we got to do this real quick. Let's handle this real quick physically. And then over time, you're just, you're so worried about the body, you just forget whatever's going on in your mind. It's like, you know, when, when you see people get into a heated conversation, and their friends are like, hey, let's just walk it off. Let's, hey, like, let's just separate. Yeah. Let's cool down. Well, the, the, I, didn't, I didn't really understand that until I got older. There's actually a thing in psychology that if you need to have a different, uh, difficult conversation with somebody, ask to go for a walk with them. Don't, don't do it face to face. Don't do it sit, you know, yeah. sitting down. Go up, have the conversation with a walk. And one of the things that can be useful for doing that is kind of set a walk that's going to take you 45 minutes to an hour, like on a loop, because one, you're both going to be stuck together. So nobody's thinking uh -huh. about how do I get out of this? And there is a flow state that you get into, which is passive in a sense. And you tend to view the conversation different, differently because you're talking it out with every step. Right. And it's funny that you, you mentioned that because a couple of years ago I was watching this TV show and uh, it was about this high school football team and the coach got two of the players that were just bumping heads and just not getting along and he picked them up and he dropped them off at, the, uh, at some top of a mountain. And to get down was two hours. So they had he dropped them off and then just drove away. And they by the time they got down there, they were exhausted. They were sore. Their feet were all blistered. But like, you can you can tell they kind of like work together on a mental level to get through it, so they can get down to the bottom of the mountain. And once the coach picked them up and saw them, like he knew, hey, it worked. You guys are good now. And they were like, yeah, we're 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 fine. We're fine. We figured it out. I bet and they were good teammates. In the end of the well. day, we're we're all human. Exactly, we're all human. We're all gonna feel, you know pains physically uh that may travel mentally and if you're on the same journey you'll figure it out it is i mean so. i don't know if it's just kind of the rhythm where you both get into the same step or it's just the fact you mentally go to a place where you have to accept we're going to talk this out i think sometimes where <laughs> it gets difficult yeah. for conversations is because everybody gets so built up about not having to want to do it that that becomes harder than actually just let, let's just get through the awkwardness and have the conversation. Well, yeah, most definitely because your pride and your ego is drained. You tire the the mind that much where it's like, you know, the first ones to tap is going to be your 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 ego and your pride. So it's like it's like if you've ever been in a fight and you got hit real hard, 
and your your ego like got checked it got put in its place and now you're like you're kind of humbled you're like okay whoa hold on this is real this is serious okay i'm open let's let's talk about this <laughs> you know what yeah, i mean yeah um i've never um i used to do a bit of boxing when i was younger not not um at any competition level but i've, I've probably done a few you know quite a few rounds of sparring probably close to a thousand hours of sparring or something you know um and yeah there's nothing checks you better than a punch to the face <laughs> no matter exactly. how well you think you're doing in life and basically that that's what life is some exactly and that's what life is like sometimes sometimes life's going to hit you hard and yeah. it's going to change your character you know like what well, usually when people say like you know oh this person's changed after this happened and it's like yeah because they had a reality check that's what they call it reality check so yeah, yeah. um it's it's all it's all natural it's all part of life it is because sometimes i think and I, i'm only speaking from sort of personal experience many many years ago i got into trouble and uh you know I had to sort of um swallow my pride a little bit um luckily i didn't go to prison i was lucky i ended up with just like a few hundred hours of community service but it, it cost me dearly i ended up bankrupt and everything and um the hardest thing and it took me quite a few years to to get the reflection that i needed but the hardest thing for me to accept that my reality check with that was regardless of the circumstances i did it to myself and i was always trying to there was a period in my life where i was trying to justify the outcome that happened so there was a point where no it couldn't have been my fault it couldn't have been my fault it was because of this it was because of that and then there was a point where it was just like nah it was all on you it was all just you yeah yeah and it's it's just personal accountability you have to come to agreement with you know because at the end of the day as as older as you get you're gonna tell yourself you know it sucks that i went through that but i needed to go through that and it sucks that i was so stupid in the mind but like i'm glad i was held accountable because what if i wasn't oh yeah and you know after a while we we all start to wake up to that because even now like i i reflect all the time and i'm like man did i really do that but damn it was worth it because look who i am now and look what i signed up for and look what i can now offer but if i wasn't held accountable or would have things played a lot different i'd be i'd be in a way worse position than i am now and I'm just grateful that I was wise enough to keep my eyes open and pay attention to what's really important. So when you, you said earlier that you, you started doing the burpees when you were really young and uh, and you, you kind of said you, you've seen some of the guys that, that had come from, you know, like prison and stuff coming out doing these type, those type of workouts as well. So where did it shift to because the way you, you sort of describe that flow state it, it's almost like a a form of meditation but it's like an all-encompassing it's body and mind at the same time so where where was there a point where it shifted from the physical to the more mental spiritual side yeah um i mean i can i can really break down a whole lot but to sum it up i felt like and I think a lot of people think like this as well. We know a lot of things we, we think we do. And sometimes it takes someone else to put it in a different perspective. Yeah. And I've gone through a lot of things. I felt like I'd known a lot of things. But it wasn't until I met my coach to where he put it more on a spiritual level. And that's when I started becoming more open to spirituality because it's, it was like more answers you get to uh, figure out that you've, you know, been having questions to. So when it comes to, you know, applying these workouts during hard times, that's where I, like I was connecting the dots, connecting the puzzles, because it makes sense to create an active lifestyle in order to live stress-free. And it just became all spiritual. Everything's energy. Everything is connected. There is no such thing as a coincidence. Like there are things and situations that happen for reasons. Um, I see most of the most successful people in the world 
all came from, you know, bad lives. They didn't grow up rich. They weren't successful at all. They came in single parent homes. Um, but they had to go through that and they had to learn and go through the dark times and fight darkness with darkness in order to find the light. So it's it gets so spiritual and it gets so personal because I can only say so much, but you're going to have to do the work. You're going to have to open up those doors into those dark rooms. And honestly, there's going to be lessons that like, I can't even tell you about because only you can know. So uh, it, it gets very, very deep. And that's that's the cool thing about life, though is that you get to go on these journeys. You get to uh, open these doors, and you're the driver of your life. So you, I can't tell you what you should and shouldn't do because you're capable of doing whatever you want. Do you feel like a, an energy building up when you know you're, say, 30 minutes away from a workout? I'm sorry, repeat that? Do you know when, like, you you know, you, you're, you're looking at the clock and you're like, oh, I'm going to be working out in about 30 minutes. Do you, do you start feeling the energy building up beforehand? Uh, no, just because before I've always made sure I've made a window for me to have enough time to work out um, before when I was having to drive to work right after. I just know that, like, hey, I got to go in there and give it my all. That's the main objective. And if I notice that I, I have, like, 10 minutes left and I have a lot to do, hey, I'm going to make – I'm going to squeeze every second out of that 10 minutes out of me physically. So um, I don't really look at the time and say, like, oh, this is how much I have left. I, I just focus on the rep and the set and just give it my all. Um, I don't – uh, how do I say? I don't drag my feet when it comes to exercising. Yeah. Because, you know, nobody, I mean, realistically, nobody wants to exercise. Like, even the most fit person. Like, it's hard, but we do it for specific reasons. But um, if we're going to do something we don't want to do, we might as well just do it perfectly. Or we might as well just put all our effort in. So let's make the best out of it. Yeah, yeah, d yeah, definitely. For me, it's it's always there's a shift at some point in the workout where the the energy just it just takes me somewhere, and yeah, oc occasionally there's an excitement that builds up towards it. So like before I've started the workout, if I'm like, you know, all right, I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to start my workout in about twenty minutes, it can start building then. It can start i can start getting into like a, mm -hmm. oh yeah this is going to happen this is going to happen and then mm -hmm. there's other days when it's just like you've i've really got to drag my sorry ass to the gym and, and, and get it done <laughs> yeah well what what's cool about the gym is that they have the mirrors and i feel like every gym everywhere you work out should have a mirror because you're it's you you're seeing your vessel do the work but not only that, like, look at your eyes, look at the pain, look at what you're hiding, look at your strength, feel good about yourself, feel sorry about yourself, whatever it may be, you get to look at that and use it as motivation. And are you happy? Are you excited? Like, whatever it is, channel it and use it. But like when I'm doing burpees and, you know, I don't have a mirror, I start thinking what's going on in my head. What, what am I manifesting about? What has been the issues? And I get lost in it. And I just let my body continue on while I get spirit, like in a spiritual realm, it feels like. Yeah, so just to, just give somebody a breakdown because you do like, um, I'm sure it's the same in the States, but in the UK, like a burpee in the UK doesn't have a, um, a press up. Whereas yours is like... Um, sort of was it's normally it's 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 almost what i would call like the navy seal body count burpees yeah there's there's different people do different burpees people i see people in like the crossfit world they'll just kind of drop down and like kind of lay down and then like act like they gotta just get up off the floor um <laughs> there's people that just drop down and and stay in push-up position without even dropping their body to the floor then there's people that do the one push up 
and then they'll do the Navy SEALs where they'll kick their feet up or, or their knees up um, or they'll do, you know, multiple knees or, you know, multiple push-ups. Or you might see me on my videos where I'll kick my feet towards my hand and back back out. Um, it's all about just getting creative. And um, that's, that's where people just get into different creativities. Because going up and down is cool. But if you want to bring the intensity, um, then you can start doing different things. And then you can start doing a whole bunch of different things. And then stand up and be like, okay, that was one rep. And then do it all over again. Okay, that's two reps. So it's completely whatever the person wants to uh, wants to say. People always have their their dumb remarks on what you should and shouldn't do. But at the end of the day, people are just mad at what they can't do or mad yeah. that they were never good enough at it. Do you get much kickback then from people trying to criticize what you do? Oh, absolutely. You know, <clears throat> social media is hilarious. And at first, I, I used to get, I used to get upset. I used, I'm not, I'm gonna be real. I used to get very upset because I'm the type of person that, like, if you're saying something stupid or like just out there, I'm upset that no one's beat you up or smacked you up before, because yeah, yeah. you have the nerve to like, you know, like who asked you to say some stupid shit? So I used to get upset, but then I just realized, like, hey, this is they're just people at home and got nothing better to do, like. Yes, I could clown on them right now, but at the end of the day, they're just people who are just bored and they they don't have much going on with their life. With my because you know? um, I personally I see a lot of stupid. What's up? No, no, carry on. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, I personally see a lot of stupid things on the internet, but never in my mind do I think of going in the comments and saying something like it's just out of character. It's like, what's the whole point? Like, come on, so. I just, I let people run their mouth. Uh, I've had people, you know, it's funny because you, you've seen me work out in a warehouse at my, at my old job. Yeah. So, yeah. There's people talking trash saying that, you know, I'm at home Depot or I need to hurry up and get back to work and blah, 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 blah. And it blow it, it makes me laugh because they don't know that I was actually the boss who got paid $50 an hour and I was on my lunch break. And I work for motion pictures. Yeah. And I just laugh about that because I'm making way more money than them and their wives together make. So, but that, that you know, the is, level of uh, maturity. It is. It's a funny thing. Because, like I said, like I, I, I think I've followed you for at least a year or two now. I, I'm not sure if it's as long as two years. I, kind of because of the whole lockdown and COVID thing, you, there's just a few years missing. Mm -hmm. Like, actually, what was the time scale there? Um, but yeah. I, I've seen you work out post videos in so many different locations from what looks like, you know, the side of the street on a footpath to warehouse, you know, to back gardens, to. And sometimes it looks like it's the middle of the day. Sometimes it looks like it's at night. Could it, there are some that's definitely, it seems to be dark. So you must be working out at night. And there's one I think I remember, which is the first one I think I found you on. It looks like you're actually working out under a street lamp. I don't know if that's true or, you know, yeah. but you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's like, no, look, I, I don't need any room. I don't need any weights. I don't need anything fancy. I've just got myself, my body, and the commitment to do it. <laughs> So it's it's funny because the one you most likely found me from, I'm working down the I'm working out down the street. It's two forty five in the morning because I work for motion pictures. The hours are crazy, but I can still get my workout in. And I'm working out and that video along with a few other videos got up to five million views with thousands and thousands and thousands of likes and comments. And it's funny because, like we were just talking about, people criticizing. They want to just they want to say the dumbest, wildest things. I didn't realize that I was working. I was working out in front of a donation center. So they're talking all the stupidest trash, and it, it was just funny. Like people really, they'll look at anything in a video and have to say something. But um, yeah. Those videos got me the most views. They're the reasons why I have so many followers. Um, simply because I was just doing what's hard, what no one else is doing. And yeah, 
Yeah. As long as you're authentic, people will notice that. Well, it's interesting. I was talking on Sunday with um, a guy called Carlton, who's my business partner, and he, he and I have a another podcast together. And we actually were talking about internet trolls because we recently have t kind of been doing some videos, putting them online, and lo loads of different topics. So, so some of them have had some massive kickbacks. And some of them, like people, you know, they, they love trying to be creative with their insults. And, and we were talking about how we handle it. Oh, yeah. and, and, and some days, because sometimes you, you read the comments because you, you do actually want to thank people that have listened and said, oh, I appreciated it. It resonated with them. And you want to just let them know that you've read their comment and that, you, you know, you're grateful that you've managed to do something that's either inspired them, helped them achieve, or just taken them out of a dark place for a few minutes. And... So, but of course, you can't always ignore the uh, the negative comments without them absorbing some of them. And I said this on this podcast uh, <laughs> at the weekend. There is a, a lady called Dana Bailey, and she's a bodybuilder. And it was her husband that said pointed out something to her. And I I always try to remember this, and I'm probably going to paraphrase it very badly. But he said that whether a comment is good or bad, when somebody you put out content and somebody writes comments in that you have a superpower that you hold over them but the minute you reply to a negative comment to that troll you've lost that power that you had over them and i always try and like yeah, do you yeah. Know, there's a truth to that because you're uh -huh. sitting in your home watching me and i've got under your skin and you've got to comment so i've triggered something you don't like and that's not me. That's something mm -hmm. I've reflected something in yourself that you don't like. And I'm just like, yeah, that, that that's where I'm at with that now. On the good days, that's where I'm at. Yeah. On, the on the bad days, I'm like, Phew, that was a bit harsh. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I've i gotten so many comments. And in the beginning, I would my blood would boil. Mm. And I would want, I, like, I would start typing and then I'd, I'd erase it. And then eventually I just start deleting them. Because I knew that it was going to roll around in my head and I was going to come back to it. So I'm like, let me just delete it so I don't even get the option to. But then I started noticing I, I would just leave it alone. And other people in the comments, would they would just start fighting. Yeah, I was never even in the conversation. And they, dude, it was, it was like cats fighting. Just It was getting wild. And then I heard from one of my mentors, he said that, you should just delete the comment because the way social media is now, uh, especially with everyone's feelings and shit, uh, someone might get super offended that they said something or someone else said something and they might just flag your post and Instagram or Facebook or whoever is going to look at your, your, your post and see that you have so many flags because people are flagging it. Even though you had nothing to do with it, it's just arguing in the comments so it might damage your page or your algorithm a little bit. So I just I just start deleting them because yeah. um, at the end of the day, like nobody has time for negativity. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it's just funny that um, when when you do something that hits something viral, you <laughs> know, and like, like you say, you, you know, you get seen a few million times. It, it, it takes you to a place that you've not had to experience before. It's a new one. So it's a new place and just like well i've never done this before so what do i do here and you find yourself like i say depending on the day depending on the mood depends on how that comment can be received and so i'm always interested in oh, hell yeah. people, you know what other people how they handle it because they're, they're, there's as tough as we can be and as thick skinned as we can be there's some days you just like Phew, i didn't need that today <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I had this one post, and I was doing burpees, and in my caption, I, I basically said that, like, you know, when my mom passed away, I utilized fitness to help me, you know, ease the pain that I was going through. And some dude was in the comments was like, oh, your mom died, so you did push-ups. That sounds really lame or some some stupid like that. And I was just like, dude, people have no chill. What <laughs> What the hell? I mean, I wasn't offended, but I'm just like people. People don't care. They're they're really miserable in their house watching you do something productive. 
because all the other comments are people saying thank you so much for sharing i can relate a lot you know etc so as long as you continue doing you just weave out the bad stupid stuff because it's not important really but it is, isn't it? It's, it's it's like you say. It's sometimes like you know, like you've lost your mum, and and you you know you're sharing that to to just let other people know that look, you can still hurt and be strong. Mm -hmm. You can still hurt, and you have to find a way to release these things, you know. And then someone just is like, oh yeah, press ups. Yeah, your mum will be impressed. Like, dude, man, you just like what is, what is yeah. going on in your day that that's what pops <laughs> into your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. you know they're the sort of people that could kill a mood at a funeral. You know, you just like what? How did? Yeah. How do you even think that needs to come out? It just, it, uh, yeah. It, yeah. It, pe people are the strangest, the strangest bunch. Uh, so, what, what's the moving like moving forward to? Because obviously you, you do personal training and stuff now, and you do a, a yes. lot. You know. What, if somebody comes to you, so if somebody's watching this and they they come to you, um, what do you want to hear from them? I want to hear from them that they are tired of not getting results. They're tired of wasting their time, basically, because at that moment they're they're ready to receive whatever information in order to get results, uh, physically or mentally. Um, because the people that, that fail, that tend to fail, they're still holding on to some pride and ego thinking that their way is going to work or, um, they can tamper with the blueprint a little bit, but the people that do excellent are people who are like, what do I got to do? I'll follow it and I'll shut the fuck up the whole entire time. Those are the people that are very successful on my program. Those are the people that get quicker results, um, and that are really hungry for it. So, um, honestly, those are the only type of people that I want. I don't care about the money. I don't mm. care about uh, the fame or the followers and stuff like that. What I do care about is helping people with the same blueprint that got me help. And it is effective. I have many clients, many testimonies. Um, I try my best to share weekly with uh, the people that I'm currently working with or that I've worked with in the past. But um, it... it it does reach out to people on a higher scale, especially because of the social media. Yeah, definitely. Because I, I can, I can sort of vouch for the fact I've seen before and after pictures of yourself because you post them occasionally, and you do actually frequently post before and after pictures of your clients. So, you know, that that just speaks for itself. Speaks for itself. So, what do your programs look like? So I have different programs uh, for different timing, for different uh, results that you may want to acquire. Uh, if you want to focus more on mindset, we can work on that. But I am going to put you through some uh, physical activities to, you know, unlock some things in your mind. If you strictly want the body, that's completely fine, too. I do have workouts. I do set you up with macronutrients on all programs. Um, and that is specifically designed for you to look good so you can feel good about yourself because when you work hard for something you feel good about it you 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 want to see every reflection of your hard work and be like damn like i did that so i help people out with that um i help people bulk up i help people with their health i help people with their uh, immune system simply because when you apply the type of nutrition aspect uh that's like in my program you start detoxing all the negative things, unnecessary body fat, all the toxins um, that's within your body, and you start to feel better physically and mentally. And this all it, it all starts in your gut. It really does. Um, when you start cleaning up your gut, your joint pains start going away. Um, all the unnecessary body fat that's being shedded off your body honestly takes all the stress and starts relieving all the weight off of your joints. Um, on, on your ligaments, all things like that. So, uh, my program really does help on a physical and mental level. Um, I know I do post a lot of before and afters of my clients, but I also post a lot of our text messages or our messages on my 
uh, training app. So the reason why I post those as well, so people can get an understanding of how they're feeling throughout the weeks. You know, people are saying like, you know what? I'm not feeling bloated anymore. I'm sleeping better. My kids are noticing that every, ever since I started an active lifestyle on your program, I'm having a better mood at home. And they're noticing that and they're liking it. Um, I went out to a family party and I didn't drink. And everyone was surprised. And, and even negative comments. Like they'll be like, oh, my family says that I'm crazy or they don't think I'm going to last long or blah, 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 blah. And I let them know that, you see, that's not a support group. They're talking down on you. They don't believe in you. I want you to show them. I want you to show them because you're going to show them that it's possible to get it all together even though you're at an older age or even though you have kids or even though you have work. So this is all about, you know, convincing other people that it's possible. And we're seeing left and right every single day from every time I come up on camera that it is possible. Like I, you seen, I was at a warehouse. I was on the street. I still got my workout in. It doesn't matter. I have three kids going on four. You know, it, it's fucking possible. Like, it's kind of disrespectful when people tell me their excuses when I live the same type of life. Like, don't disrespect me like that. You're going to, you're basically calling me a bad father because I make time to look good and you don't. Are you saying, like, I abandoned my family? Like, what? Because I don't. I wake, I wake up middle of the night and change diapers. I do all that. I don't neglect any of my responsibilities. If anything, homeboy, you need to reflect on yourself. Well, because there's a couple of things there that I, I can, again, because I see them on your social media, it's just like, it's funny how people will, that like you say, somebody will say like, you know, like I went to a party this weekend, the family would kick him back because I wouldn't have a drink. And you just like, the, the, there is a thing, we have this weird thing in society where if I sit down and say, no, no, I, I don't really drink. I, I don't drink, actually. I drink socially. So, and when I say socially, it'll be like I'm, I'm going on holiday in a couple of weeks, uh, in about five weeks surfing, and I'll be away for a couple of weeks in, in Europe, and I'll be surfing. I'm probably going to have a few drinks, definitely going to have a few drinks. I actually don't remember the last time I had a, few, a drink before that, because it, it was a few months ago. I'm not a heavy drinker. The kickback I can get because I don't really drink alcohol, or the kickback that people get because they're like, no, no, I, I don't, I don't do fast foods, I, I don't do, you know, like processed foods or something like that. And they're like, oh, what are you one of those health freaks? And it's like, no, I just actually care about what I'm putting inside my body, and there's no need, no need for it. Exactly. And then, and then again, following on from the, I think that, like I said, one of the things that caught my attention the most when i first saw that post that reel um was just like i said there was the way you were doing those burpees and the location it's just like there's no way in a million years that's the first time this guy has been knocking them out for decades do you know what i mean it is just like shit and when you see that you can't have an excuse for yourself because you're doing it there and then on the street under a lamp in the middle of the night. And like, like I said, there, there's that flow that looks like you're dancing. It's just like, well, that, there's no equipment. That there's no special place. So as long as you've got a room that's the same length as you, you can do it. That, that, that's the only requirement. So like you say, and then people, the excuses. And people, for anyone listening you live the life you want to live but hang on a second you know if, if you're having trouble with something if you're struggling with something if it's a mental health or a physical health thing there there are you don't need special equipment you don't need to be special forces you all you have to do is just you don't even have to believe in yourself you just have to just do one at a time just do one burpee come back tomorrow do two come back the day after do three by the end of the week, you'd have done seven reps of burpees. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I think that's the problem okay. sometimes. It's, it sounds too simple. You know, it's the simple things that's going to get you results. 
and people think it's got to be something so complicated. And like I, when, when I sign people up on my program, you know, I'm like, okay, you're going to do X, Y, and Z. And they're like, well, I, I'm not going to need to do this. What about A, B, C, D, E? F hey, you don't got to be that complicated. X, Y, and Z. It gets you the results. If you can do X, Y, and Z for the first week, I promise you, you'll see results on Friday. I promise you. And what happens? They, they see results. And most of the time, and I know it's different because I'm here in America, but the American diet jeopardizes the human gut so much that when they finally like start eating the proper amount that they actually need to, they drop five pounds within the first week because yeah. their, their, their body is actually taking in the proper amount for the first time in forever. And all the unnecessary body fat just starts melting off because it, it has nothing that's feeding it. That's garbage, basically, or that's overeating. Your stomach shrinks back to its natural state. It's not inflamed anymore. So um, it's simple, simple things, okay? The, the simple scales, the fancy shit fails. That's what, that's what I like to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's true, though. It's true. It is true. And another thing, because um, you, you mentioned there you're a father of three. Did you say one on the way? Yes, one on the way in about two more months. Congratulations. Because that's the other thing. Cause Thank you. You, you post as well. Is you, you, you coach one of your your young kids for baseball. Is it baseball? It is, isn't it? You, you, I see you doing baseball practice. Yeah, baseball. Baseball. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> I pay attention. I pay attention. It's um. So, what would you would you try and help them with? Um, just the feeling of how it feels. So basically, I'm gonna set him up the way he's supposed to stand and how he's supposed to swing his bat. Other than that, I'm explaining to him, hey, the ball is coming this way. You want the ball to hit this part of the bat. Where do you need to stand? When he finally hits it, he understands the way it felt standing this way, turning his body this way, where he's supposed to step. Like, he's understanding, and he's really good, too. So he's understanding, hey, when I hit it this far or when I'm hitting it, I feel it because I'm in this position or like this. And honestly, like I said, everything is energy. Everything's about the you know the the way you feel when you're doing it. So, um, dude, he he's only four years old. He's been swinging since he was like three, but he he's very good. I'm like I'm not gonna even sugarcoating it. Like he is very very good, and he is gonna be one of the best. And his mother was one of the best, and everyone in his family on her side is very very well known in all of the sports industries from baseball football boxing um they are sports people so yeah it's in his blood but also what's more in his blood is that he can see something and mimic it and he won't stop until he gets it right and so that's what it's all about honestly and that's what people People don't understand. People think like, you know, someone's just naturally talented. And it's like, no, it's not that he's naturally talented. They're talented up here where they they have to get it right. They're visualizing and they're going to keep keep on replicating until they get it right. And so, um, I mean, we can learn a lot from these kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's funny when people say like when you see, you know, professional athletes, and people say, oh, yeah, but he was so naturally talented. He was just gifted. Yeah, and there's twenty thousand hours of practice. He he was gifted, but there's twenty thousand exactly. hours of practice. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I I actually I went to high school with, I grew up with um with a pitcher. He was he's a pitcher for the Mets, the New York Mets, and um, I didn't even know he made it to the major leagues until I became an adult, basically. But like I never even knew he played baseball. But I guess he was playing, you know, outside of school, you know, at home and stuff. And, you know, he pursued it in college at a community college and he ended up just being absolutely amazing. So 
hey, as long as you can, you're not always going to be the best, but as long as you're consistent and showing up to become better and better and better, hey, yeah. you can become the best. It's probably actually worth, whereabouts in um, Los Angeles are you? So I'm right here in Westchester. It's uh, literally the hometown of LAX Airport. Yeah. So right when you, right when you land at LAX Airport, I'm like I'm right there. The burpee videos you see me post on the street, I'm like four lights away from the airport. So I'm not. I'm honestly not far. I roughly know where that is. I, I roughly know. I've been to California once. I was there in 2019 yeah. and surfed from. Um, mm -hmm. San Francisco down to San Diego, so I kind of spent a little bit of time. Oh there. yeah, well, yeah, I, I spent. If you ever come back and want to surf, yeah, I actually my surfboard. Yeah, really, I, I surf too. So do you? Do you? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not very good. I've got a longboard. I've got a couple of longboards. I'm pretty. I'm not very good. Um, my actual surf. One of my surfboards is actually in California still. Um, because it was too expensive to bring them over. Mm -hmm. So we landed in San Francisco, drove Hell to yeah. <laughs> Santa Cruz, I think, was Santa Cruz, bought a board, second-hand board there for about $500, and was actually just going to leave it behind. Do you know what I mean? Because we didn't have a plan on what to do with them um, after the two weeks was over. And I just bumped into someone. I was in downtown L.A. near the... Um, we was on a camps, uh, like in a trailer park, and bumped into this lady who was like pitched next to us called Yvonne, and we just, you know, all got chatting over a period of time, and she was just like, no, no I live about two hours away, you can drop them off at mine if you want, and they're still there, and um, we just haven't got, me and my friend, wow. we just haven't got around to going back, we was, uh, there's, um, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure it's, it's downtown, is it downtown LA? I'm trying to remember, and at the bottom of it, there's this big harbour area, and this is like the Queen Victoria or something boat is there. It's like permanently moored there, this big, massive. I'm sure it's near Compton and all of that. Uh, um, okay, so, yeah, that's, that's pretty far. I mean, yeah, it's still LA, but... Yeah, so, so, cause I, so we came from San Francisco all the way down, do you know what I mean? And um, so this is mm -hmm. like... I know places, but I don't know where they are relative to what I was doing at the time, if that, that makes sense. Um, and, oh, yeah. No, no. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it, it was good. It was good. It's just the the only thing that's difficult is I have to get a visa. I can't just come into America because I'm a criminal record. So I have to get a visa, and my five-year visa is up next year. And every time you look at the news of what's going on in, like, California and L.A. and stuff, you're just like... Phew. It's a lot of hassle to go there for a holiday if something goes wrong. <laughs> you know, I mean, cause, yeah. You know, you know. Where's, Who knows? I mean, maybe you could travel down here and, you know, America does some bullshit and you might get stuck here. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. I've got to be honest. When I was out there in 2019, I was out there for, like I said, for two weeks in 2019. And I got chatting to some people at a bar. I think we were in Santa Barbara. Uh, and they were like, well, what do you, f you know, w w what's your impression of America? And I was just like basing it on California and like what I've seen. I said, you guys have no idea how good you have it. You just, you just don't. It's a fucking amazing country and people should, and the, the way that I, mm -hmm. you know, like, and I'm there talking to p Americans in bars and stuff like that. And the way they're shitting on their country. And I was just like, you have no idea how amazing your country is. It is brilliant. I loved California. It, it mm -hmm. was just fucking phenomenal. And I'm not saying it doesn't have its problems, but find me a country that doesn't have its problems. You know, the, the, there isn't one that exists. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. You know. Yeah. Talk to, uh, talk to the people from other countries that live here after 2020. Yeah. And they'll tell you they'll tell you what they think of what's going on. Oh yeah, yeah, d d definitely. But that, that's why I try Big and time. do podcasts with people in America, because I can't, I can't, I can't watch the news and, and think for a second that any of that exists. It, it's just, um, yeah, l l like I said, it, it's the the only thing I can say about America is when I, when I went there in two thousand nineteen, 
I was just blown away by how fucking amazing that California was. You know, I wasn't the biggest fan of San, Fran San Francisco, yeah. but once I got out of San Francisco, I was just like, hmm. But then, but when I say I wasn't the biggest fan of San Francisco, that's because I, I was right in the center, leaving the airport. And, <clears throat> and ironically, actually, I'll just ramble on a second. The reason, actually, I just realized I don't like San Francisco is because even, even though I had a proper five-year visa, they detained me at the, at the airport. And I got, yeah, 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 oh, wow. this guy detained me because he wanted to know what I was doing. And when I went through to the detention part and I was sat there for like two hours and my mate was waiting for me and you weren't allowed to phone him to tell him what was going on. And we missed the pickup for our RV, which cost us like we lost $150 and it was $250 for a hotel for the night and stuff like that. But when I finally got through to the detention guy, the, custom, uh -huh. the actual customs guy, and he was just like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, no said i have no idea why that guy stopped you and detained you welcome to america i hope you have a great trip <laughs> it's just like and i'm like you know what I, mean? I was like you're joking man you know what I, mean? I had honestly to for me to get a visa i have to go to the american embassy in the uk i get interviewed it goes to homeland security and everything right it, it's like a six-month process um because you actually have really strict immigration rules and yeah yeah so this is just like so that's why i don't like i just remember that's why i don't like san francisco because they detained me and when i got through they're like no mate yeah welcome to america i've no and it was just the way he said i've no idea why that guy stopped yeah me. That's, just a, pff, that's a tough day but ju just quickly because i'm going to go off on a completely different segment now explain the horses the horse riding the horses man <laughs> the horses man so surfing and the horses are two big giant leaps I took in life to literally take me out of my bubble of what I know of this concrete world that I live in. The horses. <laughs> so I was watching uh, that show called Yellowstone. Yep. And uh, it's a very, 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 very good show. Very good show. Um and I remember watching the show, you know, they're in Montana, they're riding horses, they're cowboys, you know, uh, they work on the ranch, you know, just all this stuff. And I'm like sitting there thinking, damn, I want to ride a damn horse like that's so cool. And literally, I'm watching that show and it, it takes you out of your home for real. You will daydream all day about that show because it's so peaceful and beautiful. You're in nature. And I remember I went to work and... One of, one of the laborers who was working at my warehouse, he was like, hey, man, anytime you or your, your wife want to come over to, uh, to my, my little stable, I have horses. If you guys ever want to ride horses. And I'm like, what? Someone's listening to me because what the hell? I told him, dude, I've been thinking about riding horses every single day for the past month. So he, uh, he was like, hey, come by. And, dude, I, t I took that opportunity. I, I went up on, like, it was just natural for me on the horse. It was so natural. I, I wasn't, like, a beginner at all. I just felt it. And uh, it, it was great. Yeah, well, because, so do you get to do it often? Uh, yeah, whenever I want. So, yeah, there you have it. It's like a bad Dalek impression. That interference, that crackling, whatever that was, I don't know how it started, I don't know what caused it, it just kind of happened mid-conversation. but And it continued like that, and so I had to cut the podcast shorter than I wanted it to be. However, I will be in touch with Anthony again, and we will pick up with the horse riding, and a couple of more questions I wanted to speak to him about surfing, and there was a couple of other questions as well. So I will be picking that up when I get back from my own surfing holiday um, in France which will probably be around late September, October, and I'll bring you the two part. But I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Fascinating guy. And thank you for listening. Take care. <laughs>